In the shadow of your wings I will abide forever And hear my spirit sings I will rejoice in you, my God Welcome to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. The Granby Christian Church desires the lost to be saved and the believer to passionately pursue Christ in all that they do. Let's join Pastor John Marins for today's message. Good evening, dear friends of God. And I want to ask you an important question, but before I do, let me update you on the funds that have come in so far for the Strong Tower campaign. To date, $168,768 have come in toward that $320,000 goal. This means that about 52.7% of the funds have come in. Let's get together, friends, in Christ, and let's listen to the voice of Jesus, and let's do as he bids us to do to help KNEO to finish this worthy project and to complete all the funds needed for the tower which has been constructed. Now let me ask you that question. I want to ask you this question. Does God still speak to mankind? Again, does God still speak to mankind? Oh, when we read the living word of God, we see in the lives of virtually all recorded there that God communicated directly to them or sent an angel or a person, a prophet to do so. God spoke with Adam and Eve. At least eight times the Bible says that God spoke to Abraham. At least 104 times in the text of the Old Testament, this exact phrase occurs, the Lord spoke to Moses. The Lord spoke to David. God spoke to Solomon. God spoke to Jonah. You can read it for yourself if you will. But does God still speak? Does God, does God still do that? And if he does, Here's an important question for us personally. Do we desire to hear him and obey him? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, how we long for perfect clarity on the question that's before us today. We want to know, do you still speak to mankind? From your word, please answer this question for us. For we cry out to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his glory. Amen. In reference to the question, does God still speak to us? Let's read several passages from the Bible. We'll begin with Psalms 95, verse 6. Psalm 95, verse 6. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. The word Lord is there. What does that imply? Verse 7, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and his sheep, the sheep of his hand. What does that imply? Listen to the last part of verse 7, again from Psalm 95. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they saw my work. For 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, It is a people who go astray, listen to this, who go astray in their hearts, and they do not know my ways. Reading on in Psalms 95, verse 11, So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest. Now we move to the book of Hebrews that we have been journeying through. Hebrews chapter 3, this time verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. It's a, rep it's a repetition, isn't it? Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware. Listen to this warning, brothers. Sisters, listen to this warning. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing 
from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin hardens? What does it harden? It hardens our heart. And where are we to listen to God? For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who, having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? Verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Then to make the emphasis of our topic more complete, in the very next chapter of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, let's read beginning of verse 6. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 6. Since therefore it remains, listen to that word, remains. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobe disobedience. Disobedience again hardens our hearts and makes it difficult for us to listen to God. Again, he designates a certain day saying in David, Today after such a long time, as it has been said, Today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. To help us to see the problem that we're talking about today, let me tell you, a story from my past. Jane and I and our children were living in Centralia, Washington. I was the youth minister at a church there, and from time to time at breakfast I would read the newspaper in the breakfast nook. As I was quietly doing that one morning, <clears throat> one of our sons came and hit the newspaper right in the middle, creating a loud and very annoying sound and collapsing it into my face thus wrenching it from my loosely held grip. Now, why did the little boy do this? I was not, obviously, I was not paying attention to him. I wasn't listening to him. And yes, he wanted my undivided attention that I was not giving. He had been talking to me. It was my fault. I'd tuned out the world around me and was intently focused on my reading in other words, I had deafened my ears and had hardened my heart to his little voice by choosing to ignore him. Let's read the last few words of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 7, in seven different translations. Again, Hebrews 4, verse 7, from seven different translations, with this idea of hardening our hearts and choosing not to listen. King James, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. English Standard Version, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Christian Standard Bible, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. The New English Translation, oh, that today you would listen as he speaks. Do not harden your hearts. The Revised Standard Version, today when you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. The Darby Translation, today if you will hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. The New Living Translation, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Did you take note of the words that were repeated in each of these translations? Hear or listen. His voice, he speaks, do not harden. Friends, why would all these translations have the clear commandment, do not harden your hearts, if God was not going to be speaking to us today? The warning is clear. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. When God speaks, our purpose must be to listen and to obey. Today we must purpose not to turn a deaf ear to God as I did to my little son, but we must be preoccupied with him and his word, and his word, not with the world. Can you truly say amen to this? We need to be preoccupied with the word of God. 
I'm not just now asking for God to forgive me for all the times that I didn't listen. I'm asking God to give me the desire and the ability to listen to Him and obey Him. For some, the problem is like the problem that little Samuel had. He had not been yet taught to respond to God, to hear the voice of God. And we read about this from 1 Samuel, beginning in chapter 3, verse 1. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Listen to this. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he calls you that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called, as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. In the morning, Eli interrogated the boy and warned him with these words from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 17. And he, that's Eli speaking, and he said, What is the word that the Lord spoke to you? Please don't hide it from me. God do so to you. And more also, if you hide anything from me of all the things that he said to you. Then Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he, that's Eli the high priest, said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Friends, listen. Did not the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ herself utter some of the most important words in all the Bible when at the wedding feast at Canaan she said to the servants who are out of wine, whatever he, speaking about Jesus, whatever he says to you, do it. At the word of Jesus, they then filled vessels with water and Jesus. Then at their complete obedience to his voice, turned the water into wine. In the same way, when Elisha, the prophet, was used of God to tell Naaman, the diseased soldier, to go and dip seven times in the river Jordan, didn't Naaman become furious at first? And if it were not for his servants that came near to him and spoke such kind and entreating words, he surely would have anger have left unhealed. But listen to their words of entreaty found in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 13. My father, again, it's the servants that are speaking to Naaman, trying to get him to do as Elisha has bid him to do. My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more than when he says to you, wash and be clean? 2 Kings 5.14, So he, Naaman the soldier with the greatly dreaded disease of leprosy, the soldier Naaman, went and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a child, and he was clean. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord Jesus Christ, your servant hears.
I want you to think with me about a passage from Matthew 10, 24. The disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It's enough for a disciple to be like his teacher and a servant like his master. How did Jesus relate to God? Well, Jesus knew in his heart that apart from God, he could do nothing. And he chose to do something very specific in his life. He says in John chapter 5, verse 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him which sent me. As I hear, I judge. Friend, do you want to hear the voice of God? Do you want to obey? I ask myself that same question. Shall we pray? God, I thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ is our master and our teacher and our friend. And he, oh, knows us so well. He was robed in flesh himself and understands how hard it is to walk holding to your hand, Father, listening to your voice and obeying. So, Father, give us grace to be as your son was a true child who listens and obeys. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. If you don't have a church home, they would like to invite you to join them this Sunday for morning worship at 1045. The church is located at 969 Granby Miners Road in Granby, Missouri. Have a blessed weekend and remember to abide in the shadow of his wings. I will rejoice in you my God in the shadow of